In the career of every speculator, there comes a critical moment, a question that separates the path to fortune from the road to ruin. A position is taken, the market moves, and the great universal question arises. Should I add more? The answer to this single question and the mathematical logic behind that answer is the great dividing line in the world of speculation. There are two and only two paths. One is the path of the amateur, a path paved with hope, ego, and a deeply flawed seductive mathematics that leads, with an almost certain inevitability, to the poorhouse. The other is the path of the professional, a path governed by a cold, hard, and counterintuitive logic an invisible rule that was the mathematical engine behind every one of Jesse Livermore's greatest campaigns. This is a deep dive into that invisible rule, the simple but profound mathematics of ads. We will first dissect the catastrophic logic that governs the actions of the losing 90%, the very habit that Livermore considered the most dangerous of all speculative sins. Then we will reveal the great powerful inversion of that logic, the professional's method for compounding success a system that, by its very design, ensures that your largest bets are always placed on your most successful ideas. To understand this is to understand the mathematical heartbeat of a true market master. This is not a theoretical exercise. It is a practical guide to the most important financial decision a speculator can make after a trade is initiated. It is the art of knowing when to press your advantage and when to accept a small, tactical retreat. Mastering this one skill, this simple math of ads, is the key to transforming your trading from a game of chance into a disciplined and profitable business. Before we continue, please subscribe and leave a quick comment, even one word. This small action helps the algorithm show this video to more people and tells me these deep dives are worth making. Let us begin with the mathematics of the amateur the great foundational error that is responsible for more financial ruin than any other. This is the practice of averaging down a losing position. A trader buys a stock and it goes against him. The market, the final and absolute judge, is telling him with perfect clarity that his timing was wrong. But the amateur's ego cannot accept this verdict. He is consumed by hope, and this hope whispers a comforting and fatally flawed piece of logic. The stock is cheaper now. It is a better bargain. Buy more, and you will lower your average cost. To the amateur, this feels like a shrewd strategic maneuver. He feels he is taking control of a bad situation. In reality, he is committing financial suicide. Livermore was absolute on this point, stating with the force of an unbreakable law. Of all speculative blunders, there are few greater than trying to average a losing game. It is to reinforce failure. It is to throw good money after bad. It is to argue with the infallible verdict of the ticker tape, a battle no man has ever won. The trader is no longer operating on a reasoned analysis of the market, but on a desperate emotional need to see his original opinion vindicated. The mathematics of this error are as brutal as the psychology is flawed. A trader buys 100 shares at $50. The stock falls to $45. He is facing a manageable $500 loss. But instead of accepting this small tactical defeat, he averages down, buying another 100 shares at $45. His average cost is now $47.50. He has doubled his exposure to a stock that has already proven itself to be weak. If the stock now falls just another five points to $40, his loss is no longer $500. It is now $1,500. With every new ad on the way down, he is not reducing his risk. He is multiplying it, digging his own financial grave deeper and deeper. Livermore knew from the tape's behavior that adding to a losing stock was fighting the trend. But his great contemporary, Richard Wyckoff, provided the structural reason why this is so fatal. Wyckoff's method shows that a stock in a downtrend is under distribution by smart money. To average down, therefore, is to willingly buy the very shares that large, informed operators are desperately trying to sell. It is to become the bag holder in their skillfully managed campaign. 
To truly understand this process, to see the hidden mechanics of accumulation and distribution that drive all great trends, we invite you to subscribe to our new channel, Richard Wyckoff Trading Methods. The link is in the description below. This brings us to the great professional inversion, the invisible rule that governs every one of Livermore's campaigns. Having seen the ruinous path of the amateur, the professional does the exact opposite. The rule of the professional. You only add to a position that is already showing you a profit. This is the great continental divide of speculation. On one side lies the 90%, reinforcing their failures out of hope. On the other lies the 10%, reinforcing their successes out of a cold, mathematical, and supremely profitable logic. A profit, in the eyes of the master, is the market's own clear and unambiguous confirmation that his initial judgment was correct. It is the only signal, the only permission he needs to proceed with the campaign. Having established the great foundational law that separates the professional from the amateur, the unwavering rule to never add to a losing position but to only reinforce a winning one, we now arrive at the practical heart of the matter. It is not enough to simply know this principle in theory. The successful speculator must have a clear, mechanical, and repeatable process for putting it into action. This is not a matter of guesswork or of feel. It is a matter of mathematics, the cold, hard, and supremely profitable math of ads. This is the how-to guide, the tactical blueprint for building a great campaign from a single, correct, and confirmed idea. The entire process, the very foundation of every one of Livermore's great campaigns, begins not with a bold, aggressive charge, but with a small, cautious, and intensely analytical first step. This is the initial probe. Livermore never, under any circumstances, committed his full intended line at the outset of a trade. To do so, he knew, was to maximize his risk at the precise moment of maximum uncertainty. His first move was always a small, exploratory position, a fraction of his total intended line, perhaps one-fifth or even one-tenth. In his own book, he laid it out clearly. Suppose a man's line is 500 shares of stock. I say that he ought not to buy it all at once, not if he is speculating. This initial probe was not the main bet. It was a test. It was a way of asking the market a direct and practical question. Is my analysis correct, and is my timing perfect right now? The success of this probe was the absolute, non-negotiable prerequisite for any further action. If that first, small commitment did not show a profit almost immediately, the test had failed. The campaign was aborted before it had a chance to inflict any real damage, the small loss accepted as a cheap and necessary business expense. But if the probe was successful, it was the market's own, clear permission to proceed. With the success of the initial probe confirmed, the professional now begins the great wealth-building process, the mathematical engine of his success. This is the method of scaling up. It is the art of adding to a position in a disciplined, sequential manner. The rule, as Livermore stated it, is absolute. Let us suppose that you want to buy 500 shares of a stock. Start by buying 100 shares. Then if the market advances, buy another 100 shares and so on. But each succeeding purchase must be at a higher price than the previous one. This is the very definition of the math of ads. This is the great inversion of the amateur's logic. The amateur buys more as the price goes down, believing he is getting a bargain. The professional buys more only as the price goes up, knowing he is buying confirmed strength. Each new purchase at a new high is not an act of chasing. It is an act of reinforcing a proven, successful judgment. It is a vote of confidence, not in one's own opinion, but in the market's own clear and profitable action. The story of his great wheat trade, as chronicled in Reminiscences, is the ultimate large-scale illustration of this entire process in action. He had been studying the market, waiting with his characteristic patience. When wheat finally reached a price that he termed a pivotal point, he did not plunge with his entire intended line. 
He began with a probe. I stepped in with an initial buy order for five million bushels. This was his test. The market's reaction was favorable. It held firm and then began to advance. His probe was a success. He had received his confirmation. What did he do next? He waited for the next signal. As soon as it pierced the next pivotal point, he recounted, I gave an order to buy another five million bushels. And at what price? He noted that this second lot was executed at an average price of one and a half cents above the pivotal point, a price higher than his first purchase. This is the math of ads in its purest form. He began with a probe. It was successful. He waited for the next logical point of confirmation, the next pivotal point. And then he added a second, equally large tranche at a higher price. He was not guessing. He was not hoping. He was executing a patient, methodical, and mathematically sound campaign, his commitment growing only in proportion to his proven and demonstrated success. This is how a professional speculator builds a fortune. The pyramid is now being built. The speculator, having followed the first two great steps of the math of ads, has successfully transitioned from a state of cautious observation to one of confirmed, confident action. He has initiated his trade with a small, successful probe and has made his first addition on a rising scale, his judgment validated by the market's own favorable verdict. He now finds himself in a position of immense strategic strength. But it is here, in the management of a growing and profitable campaign, that the true art of the master speculator is revealed. This is where the advanced mindset and the ironclad rules of risk control separate a good trade from a great fortune. The first and most beautiful principle of this phase is the concept of letting the market finance your risk. The amateur, as his position grows, feels his risk increasing with every new share he buys. His anxiety mounts. The professional, however, understands that the mathematics of a correctly built pyramid do the exact opposite. As the position grows, the net risk to his own original capital systematically decreases. The accumulated profit from his early, lower-priced purchases acts as a powerful financial and psychological cushion. This backlog of profit, as Livermore called it, is the key to the professional's poise. It is the source of his courage. He knows that his initial capital is no longer on the front lines. The market's own money, the paper profit it has already given him, is now the shield that protects his entire campaign. He is, in a very real sense, playing with the house's money. This allows him to view the inevitable minor reactions not with fear, but with a calm detachment, knowing that his position can withstand these fluctuations without threatening his initial stake. This leads us to the great mechanical secret for managing this growing fortress of profit. A system so brilliant in its simplicity that Livermore himself immortalized its creator. This is the trailing stop-loss method of the great gambler, Pat Hearn. Hearn had perfected a system for protecting the profits of a pyramid, a rule so ruthlessly efficient that it removed all emotion and all guesswork from the most difficult of all trading decisions. When to take a profit. His method was the ultimate expression of defensive aggression. As he added each new lot to his pyramid, always at a higher price, he would immediately move the stop-loss order for his entire position to a single critical price, one point below the price of his most recent purchase. This was not a mental stop. It was a hard, physical order on the books. As the stock continued to advance and he continued to add to his line, his stop would mechanically trail up behind it, always anchored just one point below his latest commitment. The result of this system is a fortress of protection around the speculator's profits. The only capital truly at risk is the small one-point margin on his very last purchase. All the profits from the earlier lower-priced purchases are locked in, shielded by the trailing stop. A sudden, sharp reaction in the market, the kind that so often wipes out the gains of the undisciplined trader, could not touch him. He declared with the cold logic of a professional, that he did not see any sense in losing more than one point, whether it came out of his original margin or out of his paper profits. With the position now established and the risk being managed by a mechanical, emotionless rule, 
the final and greatest battle begins. It is a purely psychological war, a contest fought not against the ticker tape, but against one's own human nature. This is the art of sitting tight. The speculator must now have the courage and the intelligent patience to let the great move run its full, logical course. He will be tempted every day by the fearful impulse to snatch his magnificent profit. He will be assailed by bearish rumors and minor, nerve-wracking reactions. But he must hold firm. This, Livermore confessed, was the most difficult and most important lesson of his entire career. It was the final key that unlocked the door to the great fortunes. He stated it as his ultimate truth. It never was my thinking that made the big money for me. It always was my sitting. Got that? My sitting tight. The intellectual work of being right was the easy part. The difficult part was having the courage to stay right, to trust the primary trend and to not be shaken out by the meaningless emotional noise of the market. This is the final test of the master. With his analysis confirmed, his position built on a foundation of success and his risk managed by an ironclad mechanical rule, his only remaining job is to have the patience to do nothing. He must give the trend the time it needs to mature and to deliver the great, life-changing profit that is the ultimate prize of the speculative game. The math of ads, then, is a complete and holistic system. It is a philosophy of action that forces a speculator to be most cautious when he is most uncertain, at the very beginning of a trade. And it forces him to be most aggressive when he is most right, when the market itself has repeatedly confirmed his judgment with a growing profit. It is the perfect mathematical engine for professional speculation, a system that, by its very design, ensures that your failures are always small and your successes are allowed to become monumental. To truly see this system in action, to understand the raw human stories behind these cold, hard rules, there is no greater chronicle than Edwin Lefebvre's 1923 masterpiece, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. This is not a textbook that simply lists the rules of the game. It is the ultimate book of case studies, a journey into the mind of the master during his greatest campaigns. Lefebvre did not just write a biography. He documented the internal monologue of Jesse Livermore as he navigated the 1907 panic, as he built his great pyramid in wheat, and as he suffered through his most devastating human mistakes. This book allows you to sit beside him, to feel his doubt, his conviction, his flashes of insight, and to understand the deep psychological truths that forged his methods. For those committed to this deep study, we highly recommend the edition, which includes a unique, detailed chapter-by-chapter -chapter analysis by Max Davidson. This analysis acts as your co-pilot, translating the century-old wisdom of the text into a clear, actionable roadmap for the modern trader, ensuring that the lessons learned in 1923 are as powerful and as profitable today as they were then. A link to this essential edition is provided in the description below.